Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the George A. Katz Torch of Learning Awards presentation. Please welcome to the stage the Honorable Paul Engelmeyer. I have the privilege now of presenting the Torch of Learning Award to my oldest and dearest friend, Mark Kirsch. With the exception of his spectacular parents, Don and Dorothy, I have known Mark longer than anyone in this room. Mark and I met in the fateful summer of 1969 as incoming third graders. We met a little after the moon landing, and a little after Woodstock, and a little before Abbey Road was released, and a little before the Mets won the World Series. And so, while others this year may be recognizing the 50th anniversary of those events, I will be celebrating a different milestone, a half century of a transcendent friendship that is one of the greatest gifts of my life. We honor Mark today for his leadership and the contributions he has made to the cause of justice during his 32-year legal career. And we also honor him for the character that he has shown along the way, and I'll have a little more to say about that in a few moments. Mark first made his mark, so to speak, um, as an assistant United States attorney in the Eastern District of New York, after excelling at law, Yale Law School, after clerking for Judge Walker in this district, and after a stint in private practice at Sullivan and Cromwell. For his work as an AUSA, Mark was decorated by Attorney General Janet Reno, and he had many successes. I've got time to discuss just two. First, Mark rooted out a vast billion-dollar insurance fraud conspiracy. The 110 defendants whom Mark prosecuted were the largest number ever charged at a single time in the Eastern District. They represented every corner of the industry, adjusters, accountants, lawyers, you name it. Mark convicted every last defendant either at trial or through a guilty plea. And a moment at one trial showed the relentless preparation that from the start has been a hallmark of Mark's career. After the defendant took the stand, Mark, on cross-examination, got him to commit to his glittering resume. Mark then called up a veritable conga line of rebuttal witnesses, each of whom proceeded to demolish a different line in the resume. City college degree, fake. Military career, fake. 20 years at IBM, fake. Mark had ferreted out each of these people and ever prepared had stashed them away in a distant witness room anticipating just this circumstance. Now Mark also prosecuted Harvey Meyerson, whose trial some of you no doubt remember. Meyerson was a law firm name partner who lived the high life, at least until he got caught defrauding both his clients and the IRS. The trial was a total spectacle. Meyerson largely represented himself, and he was wildly combative. As his prospects at trial headed south, Meyerson got snippy with our honoree, who was the junior of the two AUSAs on the case. One day, as the jury was filing out, Meyerson snidely called Mark Cromwell. And Mark asked, why Cromwell? Meyerson replied, and I quote, as in Sullivan and Cromwell, your former home where you belong. Mark, showing the quick wit that is also a hallmark of his, responded, that's great, Alan. And Meyerson responded, why are you calling me Alan? To which Mark replied, as in Allenwood, your next home. <laughs> <laughs> That put an end to Meyerson's antics. In private practice the past 24 years, Mark has established himself as the rare trifecta of an esteemed counselor, an erudite litigation strategist, and a go-to trial lawyer with a surgeon's touch in court. He has won verdicts in federal and state court and before the SEC in cases with dauntingly high degrees of difficulty. He has been repeatedly recognized for his excellence, no surprise, Mark has been the global head or co-head of litigation at two leading law firms, first at Clifford Chance and today at Gibson Dunn, where today Mark co-heads the New York office. 
No surprise, too, that Mark's clients, companies and executives alike, call on him time again, time and again, to solve their most sensitive problems. Now, Mark, of course, has all of the skills expected of an A-list lawyer, but Mark's special weapon, his special weapon is his character. He is a person of honor. His word is good. He has a well-earned reputation as a straight shooter, and people trust him. His advocacy takes the form of level-headed reason, and as three decades of results prove, people respond. Like E.F. Hutton, when Mark talks, people listen. Judges, juries, clients, colleagues, adversaries. They are open to his persuasion. After a recent big trial win, counsel for Mark's co-defendant was quoted as saying about him, and I again quote, I am stunned that such a nice man can be such an assassin in the courtroom. You can think of it this way. Our honoree today has turned being a nice guy into a lethal litigation weapon. He has weaponized the quality of being a mensch. And as Mark's oldest friend, I'm here to tell you, and I'm gonna end with this, that Mark has always been a mensch. And the qualities that his colleagues in the legal world have always recognized in him, integrity, loyalty, engagement, decency, service, commitment, they are who he is. And he got them the old fashioned way from his parents. He is the epicenter of a close knit family. He is a devoted son and brother and husband and father and friend. He is the person who gets the emergency calls in the middle of the night and who always steps up without hesitation or fanfare. His world revolves his awesome daughters, Sylvie, Julia, and Maddie, and his awesome wife, Hillary. He has richly earned his vast circle of admiring friends, many of whom are here today to pay him tribute. He is engaged in his community, his kids' school, and his synagogue, and topical here in the American Friends of Hebrew University on whose board he has long served. He exemplifies tikkun olam, the concept in Judaism that we all have a responsibility to heal the world. Character is durable. And so while I can't say that I saw this event coming back in the summer of 1969, I can certainly say this. If you had told me at the start of our legal careers together 32 years ago in 1987 that Mark would one day be receiving an award given in recognition of leadership, integrity, commitment to justice, dedication to education, and being an all-around mensch, I would have said to you, of course he will. Of course he will. It's my great pleasure now to present this year's Torch of Learning Award to our dear friend and a man I'm enormously proud to call my best friend, Mark Kirsch. Thank you, but sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Where's Paul? Ah, thanks for those extraordinarily kind words, Paul. There are few things better than being introduced by my oldest and best friend, a friend of nearly 50 years, a great friend, a great judge, a great man. Thank you, Paul. Um, I want to thank Mark and Mira Mayer truly wonderful people who so kindly asked me if I'd receive the award. Who would say no? Thank you. Um, I'm also grateful to my co-chairs, each of whom is a dear personal friend. Thank you to all the tribute committee members. Thank you to Pam and the board. Thank you to my close friend and partner, Larry Zweifak, who himself received this award. Thank you to my firm, Gibson Dunn, for your consistent support of AFHU. And thank you for being the easiest place in the world to work. The firm's almost like high school, except the, the lunch is modestly better. You, you go in and you hang out with your friends all day. It's nice. Um, and of course, thank you to Suzanne Ponceau, Maura Millis, and the entire staff at AFHU who worked so hard to make today's event a success, and who works, who works so hard for AFHU 
every day. Thank you to Brett Stevens for speaking today. On the days I agree with what you write, on the days I don't, on the days I'm not sure, I always want to know what you think. And you are a beautiful writer. Thank you. Um, now, I'm particularly blessed and grateful to be able to thank my parents, Donald and Dorothy Kirsch, in public, as I've done many times, at home. They're here today. They raised me, my sister, and my brother, always with love and kindness, literally without exception. They insisted on nothing more than that we live lives of decency, integrity, and thoughtfulness towards others, particularly those less fortunate, and that we work hard. And that's one of the great paradoxes of life. Working hard is actually the easiest thing to do because it doesn't require any skill, only effort. That was one of the greatest lessons my parents ever taught me. I love you, Mom and Dad. You have been and are the best parents. Thank you for everything. And, and I love my daughters, Sylvie, Julia, and Maddie. Girls, you're the apex of joy for me, living proof that life is worth living. I look at the craziness in the world, and then I look at you, and I think, yeah, it'll be fine. I love you, girls. And, and of course, I want to thank Hillary, the love of my life. Beautiful, brilliant, truly accomplished. The person who sees everything clearly and who sees me clearly. I've always been luckier than I deserve. Always. Which is great, because I believe in averaging up. Hillary's particular proof of that. I love you, sweetheart. Now, now, now I've used the word love a few times today, and I'll, I'll use it just a few more. John Lennon wrote, love is the answer. And you know that for sure. Uh, and I do. One thing that's so clear is how much of Hebrew University's mission is animated by love. Knowledge without love leaves me cold. But love of what knowledge can do, how it can shape and improve the lives of those it touches, how it can bring communities together, that makes knowledge of how to bring people together not only useful, but essential and worthy. Knowledge brings familiarity, and familiarity breeds respect, and maybe more love. Hebrew University stands on Mount Scopus, but that's not what it's built on. Ultimately, it's built on a foundation of love. Love of knowledge, love of people, love of knowledge bringing people together. I urge you all to learn more about Hebrew University and to continue to support it as best you can. Thank you for the Torch of Learning Award. I look again at the list of those who received it before me, and I think yet again, it's just great to average up. To my family, my friends, and the friends of the university who came today, thank you all so much. See you next year. Thanks.